On today's video, we're going to talk about how to create a subtax, right? I recently got an email from someone who was like, oh, Aisha, I've downloaded Jira and I'm trying to create a subtax. When I click the create button here at the top, it's not showing me an option for subtax. So how do I create subtax? So in my video today, my goal is to cover like simple way on how to create subtax and this may look different from Jira board to Jira board, um, but my goal here is just to show you on this particular board how to create it, and I will tell you more if, in case at work how you also create it. Welcome back to Aishacom. I'm very happy to have you join my platform. So let's get into the video. So like I was saying, if we click on the create uh, icon at the top here, if you click on the issue type, right, I click on the drop down arrow, it only shows you story, tags, bug, epic, Depending on your company, like how they created that issue type, they might have different, even more issue type, but you hardly ever see subtax on this category. So in order for you to create a subtax, you basically have to go on the issue, right? Remember it's called sub tax, right? It's underneath a tax, right? It can be a bug if you wanna create a uh, series of steps on how you wanna create that or on the story. But in this video, I'm gonna go on the story so let's go to this story, uh, AIS9, uh, right? And I click on that. It opened on the side. And then I have to click on it again so it can fully open the story. And that's what I'm doing right now. The story is being fully opened. Then I go on, on the icon to hit uh, create subtax, right? And this might be different uh, company to company. Uh, I know mine here to create subtax, it just say add a child issue. But I know at work, uh, my Jira, my company Jira at work, for me to create subtax, I have to go all the way down and click the plus sign. And when I click the plus sign, it shows you uh, um, subtax. Sometimes it even calls it subtax. Even here, it's not even calling it subtax, it's calling it a child, right? So this is the parent and this is the child. Uh, and I'm gonna click uh, add a child issue. So this is uh, as a shopper, I want to buy a product online so that I can get it before the holiday. Hmm. So before I even create this subtax, let's talk about why team members or why people will use subtax, right? Um, subtax sometimes is written down for the developers themselves or whoever that's doing the work whereby They've had the complete user story where they have all the whole this list of things and the value they're trying to deliver with that story. But for their own tracking purposes to know on step by step how they want to do this, they will create subtax. So sometimes to have seen it whereby the developers will have their own subtax under that same story, they will link it. And the quality analysts to the testers to will have their own subtax and link it to that same story. So as each one of them are doing their own part of that one story, they're also tracking their own individual work in a subtax. Nothing wrong with that, right? Where each team members will use their own subtask and do their own work. And at the end, they'll close the tax, right? It becomes a problem. Let me say this again. <laughs> it becomes a problem whereby in a particular active sprint, we have a subtax in an active sprint and we have the parent story in the backlog. That's a problem, right? Because that means you're basically working some part of an tax. That means you're doing a tax without looking at the overall value of the actual delivering of that particular story. And some of people are like, oh, what do you mean by that, Aisha? Okay, let me further explain, right? So let's say I just created this child, right? Uh, let me say I want to buy a product online. Let me say I, I would like to buy, or like to buy bag. The product is big, right? We all know product is huge. So then I hit create. So I just created my subtax right there. That's the subtax, right? Um, I don't know why it's marking it done. I didn't even mark it done. I can move it back to the because it's not done. Uh, so if I click hover over here, then Jira gives me the icon of the subtax right here. So now I have the subtax icon. But if notice when we click at the top, we didn't have that. Uh, by me clicking add a child issue, then this thing came up. Then I now added the child and then it gave me the number. Uh, this is the subtax number and this is the subtax. I would like to buy a bag under this one of the product I want to buy is the bag, right? 
and now this is the subtax, right? So this now is the parent, uh, meaning that the user story itself, that it's an end-to-end -end user story that hopefully have the whole whole depiction of who, what, and why. And at the end of it, also have the acceptance criteria. And then let's say the team member just want to further break it down on their own and have their own acceptance criteria. And for that QA developer, they want to do it, that's fine, right? But it becomes an issue, right? When this particular story, this user story itself, it's in the product backlog, and I only pull in this subtax to the sprint because that's not value. Because at the end of the day, we cannot close this story until all the subtax is completed, right? Uh, sometimes you'll see team members that they'll close this story and they'll leave this open. And guess what? That's where Jira will prevent you from closing your sprint. I'm going to do a new video on why, what are some reasons why you can close your sprint. And this is one of them. If you have the subtax open and you already marked the parent story done, when in reality, you need to update and close your particular subtax, Jira will prevent you from closing your sprint. Your sprint. And it's an anti-pattern for your team to basically just have the subtax uh, for developer and QA separately and put it in the board and leave the parent stories in the back, product backlog. At all time, I want to ensure that if we have this, if you are working on a subtax, we should also have the story in the active sprint, if we are working on it. Uh, the team can further break this down however they want with their own subtax, that's fine. Then at the end of the day, they should just close what's done. And they shouldn't close all the subtax when they know this particular story is not done. Some team members will see it as, when all the subtax is done, then the particular uh, acceptance criteria have been met, which is fine, right? Uh, but as you're updating your subtax, also ensure that you also update the parent story. I just want to pull this out there because sometimes people always have this question about subtax, like, oh, when do we use subtax? How do we go about your subtax? Follow your company rules, follow your company's policies and procedures. I have some companies where they don't have like a lot of Jira hygiene when it comes to uh, subtax, they are very flexible. Team can use it however they want. Uh, you might also see some companies that might be a little strict with it. They'll be like telling you, oh, you might you can use that, or you can only use it if you want to track some things or you want to follow up on something, you know. Just ensure that you are reusing it and appropriately in your team. And you and the team members can have as many subtax as they want, you know, depending however the team wants to do. So the question is, who creates subtax? Right, I know I've said developer. Uh, don't think that you have a, a product owner that will create the story for you and you expect them to also now create a sub subtax for you. No, uh, you are the one responsible for creating your own subtax and you also are responsible for closing all of your subtax. Uh, don't create a subtax and you're working on things and you're not closing. And in my experience though, I've seen that team members that use subtax a lot are those team members that are tracking their daily hours, right? Whereby uh, they have to input the hours they work in a day. So they create a subtax to better track their own hours, right? Going back to the reason why we don't have hours in the team, because automatically it forces the team to work in silos, which we don't like, right? Uh, other than the team looking at the overall uh velocity or the overall effort it will take to actually deliver that value. They'll be so focused on doing their own hours and be so obsessed with having the right amount of hours, right? But sometimes even at the end of the day, they'll put all the hours, they still will not complete the work, right? So that's why uh, just be cautious when your team use subtax, ensure that you are coaching them the right way and you are educating them the right way, right? So the next question people have also asked me, they'll be like, okay, Aisha, if my team have a subtax, do we estimate our subtax? Do we estimate it? So the question is no, right? But let me just let me just be cautious again by saying no, right? So if your team work in hours, like absolute hours, I've seen whereby team members be putting their hours using the subtax. But let's say your team use a uh, uh, story pointing and they use like relative estimates, the, the effort points based on the complexity and the unknown and the risks involved and all of that. If that's the case, you do not estimate a subtax. So the estimate given to the parent story, like in this case of two, right? This perfect example here, this story that's been given a two story points 
she also accounts for everything else underneath it. Everything else under this subtitle, she also accounts for it all. But don't be that team whereby you give a parent story uh, a three and you go back, you want to start to estimate this a five. That's wrong, right? Very, very wrong. Uh, and you hardly ever see a team that's doing relative estimates whereby they will give this a estimate of five and go ahead and further give this like uh, further breaking it down on how they get it to five. I've hardly have seen that. But I've seen this whereby in Azure DevOps, in ADO, where some teams or some people that have mentored in the past, whereby they will use story pointing for the, a particular parent story and for their tags or sub tags, they now give it the hours, right? I think people that use Rally, they also do it that way. Some teams, uh, I've seen them use it that way too, whereby the company are very curious to see the hours, that they are, how they are burning down their work daily. So they have to include the hours of work spent in a particular tax before they can close the story. But hopefully you guys are using Jira. Jira is so simple to use. I'm not just promoting Jira. By the way, I'm not getting paid by Atlantia <laughs> for promoting Jira. But hopefully you're also part of the team that the way how you guys estimate is based on the effort itself and not hours delivered. But if that's the case, that's what your company is doing. For now, follow it. But hopefully, hopefully you can get to convince them to that or adopt the proper way of doing work. Because at the end of the day, we just want to ensure that we are delivering value and we are actually doing the right thing for our customers and our end users. So that's how you create a subtax. And if you want to add more, I just have to come back and hit this plus. And I'll just type here and let's say I want to call this uh by I want to buy uh shoes. And I hit create. So that's another subtax. So people will ask me that, oh, Aisha, when I'm creating a subtax and a task, do I also have to follow the proper hygiene of the invest criteria? To be honest, no, I've never done that for a subtax where I have to ensure the store, the uh the tax is the, the subtax is independent, all of that. It's unnecessary, right? Because that's why we actually have the parent story for, you know. Um, but if your team members do that too, well, that's their choice. But I won't impose that or say that, oh, that's something that they must follow all the best practices when it comes to subtasks. Because I see it as just a, a way where the development team can use that for their own tracking purposes and also bring some kind of alignment amongst themselves as they work collaboratively with the QE on how they can transfer and work collaboratively together. Right. I hope this how to create subtasks and this mini lecture on subtasks have been valuable for you all. If so, if you are interested in mentorship, do not hesitate to email me at admin at aishascomtech.com. You can also check our website at www.aishatechs.com. Uh, thank you all for watching this video. See you all again in my next video.